Jobang issue, they want to take some of the COVID regulations and make them permanent so that this superpower that government had under lockdown, they will have moving forward. And if they tell you, Smuda, we don't trust you, you're going to quarantine. You're like, no, but my rights, they'll say, no, it's in the National Health Act. This is The Hustler's Corner. Welcome to the Hustlers Corner. This is virtual Mkuku. Mkuku says Parapagin. I know some people ask um, Pendle, they're like, you like making signs, hand signals. What is that sign again? B M. Oh, <laughs> virtual B -M. This is where we are. Shabu Come on. Oh, because I'm say, I'm a mask can be done away with. So I can. No, no, no. Kunta, you proper. Donkey. <laughs> None of this elbow, chicken wing. Danko means thank you. Let's go straight to that shop shop sign to show good you guys have got your dankos as well that we're creating this content for you. One, two, three, let's go. Click, 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 click. Thank you. Let's go to the subscription button. The community has to grow, guys. Click. Thank you. And then last one, just that notification bell so you know when we drop episode. Let's go. Switch it on. <laughs> guys, please don't forget, Monday and Friday we drop episodes at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Mondays, it's strictly for virtual mkuku. So Mondays, I'm always with Peño. And then on Fridays, I might be with other guests just by myself. I might be with somebody or whoever. But some Fridays, I'll also be with Upeño as well. So it's basically two podcasts. We're building another one on top of another one. <laughs> no, I'm good, uh, Spuda. Uh, I'm excited. I think this is episode five, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's six. Episode six? Yeah, we're moving, bro. Jeez. And we're getting in the move. Eh? Yo, um, I'm starting to feel it. People are happy. Uh, I'm reading the comments. I'm engaging with people. I'm meeting people in the streets. I feel like a mini Buddha <laughs> in the streets. <laughs> Except Pedro, the black pen. <laughs> uh, so I'm quite happy and I'm quite inspired by what this platform is doing for people out there. Yeah. And remember what Ntantalak said when he came here? He said, this is not our platform. Yeah. So no matter how well it does, remember it's not ours. It's to serve the people. I fully agree. Yeah, but by the time you're dealing out with my man, you'll be a force to be reckoned with in this I'll, country. I'll be a DJ school. DJ Pence. You'll be way better than you. You're already on another level. My yeah, role is you. just to add a bit of value so you, so you continue to shine. And I also appreciate the value that you're bringing to me as well. Sbura, thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, like, like we've said, like Ontlantra said, you guys have run a race. You're still running a great race. And it's for us to not just watch from the distance, but to be involved and say, look, Anyway, Khrodman, we can come into the race. We can also run a few miles until the next generation comes as well. No, I totally agree. And I, since it's theirs, I think uh, the best thing to do is to keep to our promise, just like we did the previous episode, read their comments. Boom. Maybe you'll read the first, or should I start? You can start. The first one from Liendo Mapang goes, by the way, shout out to everybody, guys. We've done so well. The episode with uh, Mr. Andy Lemklitama is hardly five days. It's still on 50,000 views, bro. Crazy. Sure. Absolutely crazy. People have missed to Andile. I've missed to Andile, and we're happy to see him in great health. What a great episode. Yeah. What an amazing brother. And I'm looking forward to that debate. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Liendo Mapanga. In SA, you get an RDP house in an area that you live where you can't even get to your yard by a car. And then count that as a doing a great job, which is, we count that as doing a great job, which is crazy because for me, if you want to uplift blacks, if they're in a bad area, get a new place, build roads, build houses, and live, uh, uh, and live them with a yard to be able to even extend to build a vegetable garden, or at least they have power to do so in future because with what they're getting already from the government, the government is forcing them to go and look for houses in other places. So what is the point of building those houses? Our leaders are on some mafia shh. Because what I see in SA, it's a big scam while they live in big mansions. People are just wasting their votes in return, get free t-shirts and nothing else. This is from Leandro Mapang. Yeah, we're still going to discuss politics. Uh, constructive criticism from Royal N, for me in particular. I still say Penal should learn to let someone finish their thoughts before interjecting. But great job, guys. I prefer you more than other podcasts. You are informative. I hate being told what to do, but if virtual mkuk akseyam eyabantu, and I will listen to people and I will continue trying to work on becoming better. I think you're also better positioned. You work with somebody who's been in broadcasting for 20 years. I think there might be a thing or two that you might learn from me that will sort of shape your broadcasting skills. But I don't think maybe that's what they're trying to say would change from who you really yes, are. Yes, yes. And I was saying to you off air earlier, Nami back in the day, I, I was trained from YFM and I've always been Ipanzula because sure. I looked up to Kabzela. 
But I think a lot of people can pick up what I've evolved, I've grown, but there's still that pantulaness in me. Of course. So, which is what I did not want to lose in my broadcasting career. Although sure. I was shaped, but I was still very strict about um, who I am and what I represent. And I just never wanted to be diluted in, 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 you know, from, from being me. Do you understand? We're always a work in progress. I totally agree. Yeah. And I think when we also take po constructive criticism and we work on it, the better. As opposed to somebody who refuses to be educated, sure. refuses to be advised. Sure. Like, Kasi Pede Rekebo Mahana Yeah. You know? <laughs> we're, not, we're not those people. We're people of the people. Yes, sir. And yeah. we are teachable. All right, let's get into the next one. This one is from Spirit Mpumi. Very informative. Does our constitution allow us to have a gap term in terms of a ruling party or president and elect a representative for our country while political parties have some sort of economic codessa and discuss the economic inclusion of native people? That was a question. I suggest it is done Russia style with a similar cast of podcast channels like this one. McG, where all discussions and negotiations are recorded and comments are taken into account as part of the discussion. Even more, each department must have a YouTube channel and we must see all discussions. We must have new comment administrators who are going to take our comments seriously and have them documented. Thank you very much. This one is from Spirit Mpumi. Jeez, those are great, those are great thoughts. Kwezi Khalima. This is a platform that will shift a lot of minds. I am personally inspired by this platform and both of you, Penel and DJ Sbu, I am taking a page out of your book and offering my data analytics skills to virtual Mkuku. I just finished my honors in statistics last year and would love to contribute my skills to help this platform grow our virtual squad cam. That's crazy, Khalima. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. We're, we're going to reach out to you guys. We're probably going to need a platform where all these skilled people who want to help us build this community can come in and say, this is what I'll do, this is what I'll do. And then we create something beautiful for the community at large. I totally agree as well. This one is from um, Albano, PTYLTD. I think that's the name of the company. He's probably open or commented using his company's YouTube. True leadership is what DJ Spoo is portraying, sitting there and allowing Penel Mlocha to take lead on political matters since he has more insight. No arguing, just sipping water every now and then, learning from one another. Otherwise, good peace and great job that you guys are doing. Keep going. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. I learn from him all the time. And I always, uh, as we were saying earlier, we complement each other because we're learning from one another. Uh, I think last one from me. There, there were a lot of really great comments just thanking us for what we're doing. I think people are loving our energy and how, how much we, we work together. Uh, but this is going to be the last formal one that I read from Untando Mweketi, Elias Mashile. Virtual Mkuku. I love this show. I've just... No, am I reading? No. It's a different one. Virtual Mkuku, I love this show. I've just started a digital marketing agency. The Hustlers Corner has served as a great source of motivation and encouragement for me to keep going. With my agency, I'd like to help you guys reach any number of views you guys would like to reach on any episode of your choice. What I love is that we've got skills at our disposal. Boom. And it would be very dumb to let those go to waste, yeah. especially when people are offering their services. And then let's start putting all of these ideas on a pot. Let's not postpone things. Let's get things done as we go. Agreed. All right, my last one from me, Mapete Rakoto. This man's view on life in South Africa, talking about Duput Andilem Kutama, should be shared which as, with as many young black people as possible. Another one from Awesa Aguadza. It is the first time I've enjoyed Andilem Kutama's interview. He sounds so mature and consistent. Africans must unite. It's what Malema has been saying all along, down with... Um, people that get to divide us and there's more comments we appreciate you guys and thank you without wasting any time let's get into it now the first topic that i'd like for us to touch on today was a gentleman that over the years i've always thought <laughs> the time but over the years i've grown to understand him uh, on a lot of matters that he's speaking about and i've grown to have even more admiration of the man maybe back then i was too too much maybe i was still too young I wasn't as open as I am now. And I think I'm more mature now and as my wisdom gets, keeps growing, I, I'm getting to understand him more. And, and the more I understand things, um, he's becoming one of, one of those political, uh, political analyst voices sure. that I, I'm, I'm actually drawn to. I think I, I like, I, I've got so much admiration from that, I like, I like sure. it. Anyway, uh, why do I say so? I checked out his piece when he was being interviewed on, um, on TV. He said South Africa has got the highest unemployment in the world. I, do, I didn't know that we've got a, a high, high employment rate. I didn't know that we are the highest in the world. And also, he says that the British system, which started in the late 1900s, 
um, needed a country that was going to ma manage their interests on their behalf because they had colonized us, right? And then he continues to say that they then got migrant workers from India because apparently the Zulus at the time in KZN, they were refusing to work um, at the sugar canes. In Zulu. And the, in Zulu, <laughs> as he would put it. And then he says, they then discovered gold, talking about the British. And then they restructured their system, getting our grandparents to work um, in the, to work in those mines for cheap labor. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, he says, uh, apart from having gotten migrant workers from India, in KZN, as time went, when they discovered gold in Johannesburg, they started getting our own local um, people to be cheap labor. And apparently, they had to get uh, Afrikaners to manage us. Yeah. And over time went, the middle class, which is a certain part of our uh, citizenship or our citizens, to be uh, a part of that group that manages the rest of the masses or manages their interest for lack of a better word so as to put it but i don't want to paraphrase them wrong sure. so what i will do i'll just quickly play just a few seconds sure uh just a snippet of that interview no hit and then from there i would like to hear your opinions on it no stress because those are very very good points no stress listen to him guys this is mr muelet Timbeke. a lot of a lot of you guys are familiar with him well the our and equal society uh Many people think it was designed by apartheid, uh, that it was designed by the National Party, if you wish. Actually, this unequal society was designed by the British at the end of the 19th century and at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, Britain, as you may remember, was the colonial power that controlled South Africa. Ah, what did I press? I hear you. Ah! <laughs> and I'm going to waste time, but basically explains Jeez. what I've just said. Go check out the interviews on YouTube. It was on the SABC, Mr. Mwelletinbeg. I think that was like three or four weeks ago. Yeah. I didn't know. Well, I knew that we were colonized by the British, but I did not know and in, 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 in how it happened and how or why in 2022 we have such a, a an undivided society. I'm one of the, the people that uh, used to criticize Mwelletinbeg the brother of ex-president Thabo Mbeki for, for years. And listening to you speak, I'm just thinking, I, I think we weren't as politically literate as we, we are now. And I think he had an inside lane that we didn't have. And when he criticized the ANC back then, those of us who used to love the ANC very much, we didn't understand. And he knew the deals and all those things. So he had an insider lane. And I think as we become more politically literate, we understand him now. Did a great interview with Tusakina uh, Kamwendo on Morning Life on SABC2. Um, and he literally unpacked that the South African economy serves foreign interests, and in particular, British interests. I still say it's funny today that we speak about the youth of 76 and how they were fighting against Afrikaans. But they've never fought against English, which means we were colonized well by the British. The British, according to him, have never lost power. They've run our minds, they've run our economy. And just at different times, they've had different people running their interests or being all supervised or bus at any given time. When it wasn't them, after the colonization project, they handed over to the Afrikaners, who acted as supervisors to enforce and exploit black people for these British mines. And then afterwards, they went and they found a very friendly ANC with um, well-polished, good English-speaking black people, who today are still kind of running. We had a situation like Imarikana, where you find out the mine that was being protected was Lonman, which stands for London Mining, which means it's still British owned. There's a list of all the countries that own our mines in this country, foreign, French, Chinese, American, etc. And I do think it's a, it's a really, really great interview for anyone who doesn't really know our history. Jacob Zuma at some point, and there's a clip on YouTube as well, where he's schooling parliament, saying that our problem started in 1652 and white people got here. And just like Umweleti, he gives an account of our history. It saddens me how our education system does not drum this into our heads because this is our identity. And it's not just for black kids, it's for white kids to understand where we come from. So that when a black child is complaining, the white child understands. But it's almost like we are intentionally miseducated. So having a great political analyst, economist, such as Umweleti Mbegi, document our history with the British getting here, I think, at the end of the 18th century or 19th century, and then accounting, including the Zulus refusing to work the sugar fields and bringing the Indians here, of which KZN and Durban in particular has got the highest concentration of Indian people in one space outside of India. 
Those are the things we don't know. Today, we still don't know who owns the mines. We talk about it, white monopoly capital, but we don't know. Jobang Yishu, they want to take some of the COVID regulations and make them permanent so that this superpower that government had under lockdown, they will have moving forward. And if they tell you, Spuda, we don't trust you, you're going to quarantine. You're like, no, but my rights, they'll say, no, it's in the National Health Act that we've now implemented. We're saying, let's push back. We, want, we don't want our rights violated per the constitution. And I'm saying personally, we need to become more politically literate. We need to fight some of the laws. This is just an example. There are many oppressive laws in this country. And because the average man out there doesn't know how to actually begin the process of amending a law to serve the people, whether it's a national law or a provincial law or bylaws in a certain city or town, it's time for us to get involved. You don't need to be a politician. You just need to be a person with a voice to fight back. I love what you're saying. We've got a voice. And as much as we're not politicians, why or what is it that we're doing? And that's why I loved our conversation of air to say, and maybe how can we have virtu virtual mkuku as some sort of a power of some stock fell or, 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 or crowdfunding set up yeah. that is an NPO that can be set up to assist Borna, our audiences, because yeah. Borna, they are funding it. They are crowdfunding it. What are some of the ideas that you guys have with um, what we're trying to, we might not have all of the ideas, but what we have is our ideas is to help you or is to help out as many people out there, is to empower young people. And I'd like to hear your opinions as far as our future is concerned. Or let me say our vision as virtual cook in making some sort of impact in society. We've, we've had conversations off air. You've given me really great ideas. Uh, I fully agree with them. I'm passionate about stock fells, savings clubs, crowdfunding. The idea which we've seen again, Afri Forum that have built with solidarity a 300 million uh, Technicon or college for African students. The power of small monies. The same small monies that oh mama, oh baba, oh kok, oh mkul, are giving to insurance companies so that they can be wealthy. We're saying instead of that, let's use our own stock files and build a virtual mkuku into something that serves the people out there. So that it's not just comments. It's not just likes and laughing on social media. It's, it's actually saying we have built a non-profit organization. If you have a company there, you'll be able to get tax deductions based on this platform we have created with you. You will give us directive, not as politicians, not as anyone who has a vested interest. I want to be rich or famous, but someone who is saying, guys, I'm putting my hand up. I want to help you where, we, where I can. You guys have skills we don't have. Bring those skills and then lead us as well in those things. Let's crowdfund, let's use this NPO, and then let's begin directing it in certain initiatives that are going to unlock us. Whether it's financial literacy and finding out about the future of money and things like crypto, whether it's building black brands, how to build a great black business, a great South African business, a great global business. We spoke about it, Trip, and the fact that there are, there are billboards across the highway in Joburg. Or whether it's something like political literacy where if you want to be a politician, this is how you can serve your people better. If you don't want to be a politician, how do we set up civil organizations? How do we educate young kids to be politically active and conscious? How do we get them to understand that the police are meant to serve you? The nurses and the doctors, the traffic officers are not on the roads to harass you. That's wrong. They're there to protect you. So when they tell you we're speeding, it's not because they're punishing you. It's because they're saying we don't want you to die and get our people to open their minds. And if we can pull this platform into something great with the help of our people, I... I'm, I'm excited and I'm nervous about what could happen. I'm also the, uh, I'm a big believer of starting things and other people will join as it goes, as opposed to waiting for handouts. We've got a little audience here that is willing to assist us grow this community. And I think such ideas are noble and they come from a good place. Yeah. And to make sure that they hold us to account, I think we should do things like maybe nominating a board from some of our audience members. And I think over the next couple of weeks or so as time goes, they'll give us more ideas on some of the things that we can do. Sure. But maybe on some of the funds that we're gonna, and we're gonna have an open crowdfunding or a hundred rand or a thousand rands or even 20,000 rand. And then we make sure that every cent is accountable Boom. and we show the people where that money goes to. Boom. For instance, maybe our first, our first 10, 20 grand goes into us getting better equipment. Mm or getting ourselves studios sure. or getting ourselves our own property place where just like a church, sure. just like how they've run Grace Bible Church as a business so successfully over the years sure. inspires me. 
on how they were able to put together a board and they're transparent and accountable to the church members and they've built it to become that amazing church that it is today. I remember back in the day I used to go to Grace, it wasn't as successful as it is, as it is today, yes. but they had a vision and they involved, they involved their congregants and they got some sharp minds, some educated minds together, they formed a board till today. and. Grace Bible Chase is going to be around for, for forever. Yeah. We're going to die and leave it here. But it's because they put a structure in it, then they were intentional about it. And I think those are the ideas we should put into Virtual Mkuku with their help. I fully agree. I've, I've got nothing to add to that. Help us, help you. Let's build a Virtual Mkuku into a virtual squatter camp that serves us not just on the internet, but in real life as well. Shout out to my brother, Black Coffee. I'm so proud of you from nothing my brother from the bottom of the bottom i remember when you joined the entertainment industry when you came up in the music industry your journey nabo christos nabo oskido your journey nabo greg with the nabo vini just seeing you grow and dropping music and starting to travel overseas investing in yourself if you can listen to coffee tell his story of yeah. how he came up and how he invested in himself to build an, a, a global career you can't help but be inspired and for that being said, I would like to congratulate you, but it's not your award. That award is for every kid in Matatiela, in Sechero, in Mlazi, in Limpopo, somewhere in the Eastern Cape, in Pumalanga, for them to believe they one day can be great. I've just loved his achievements and what he's been able to do through his journey. He's always opened himself up to us and as i did say on last week's episode as well that when you do attend his shows overseas he's always open enough to show you love and to make you feel special that you are from home yeah. you from south africa like i know you <laughs> whether it's a crowd of people holding a south african flag sure. in the crowd he always shows love back sure. you know and if he knows you he will welcome you to those backstages sometimes he'll travel with you and he's done that with me a couple of times and i just couldn't help see especially the fact that when he went to pick up that award he was with his son. Beautiful. So congratulations, Nati. I'm proud of you, my brother. Thank you for the inspiration. Just from my side, I don't know Khrotman, not DJ Black Coffee personally, but through his interviews, the guy is so humble. He, he, he doesn't even try. Ooh, ooh, yeah, nah. I remember him being asked on a political platform what he thinks, and he was like, I'm a musician. I can tell you about music. Ask the political guys what they think, which means he humbles himself enough to know that this is what I'm good at and this is what other people are good at. His ability to put people on, whether it's going to parties, a Pete Didi and he's dragging South African gents with your examples of what he's done with you, taking his son so that he's an example of a great black father, taking his son there to be like, come be with me because you are the future. One day when I'm gone, it will be you. I think we're so blessed to live in a time where people like yourself, people like oh, Black Coffee, even the presenter Trevor of the, the, the Grammy Awards, Trev, Trevor Noah, that are blazing a trail that is infectious. There's no self-hate. There's no beef. There's no threatening each other. It's, it's all love. It's all creation. And it's really up to anyone out there to be like, I think I can make it. Any girl, um, I think it's DJ Uncle Waffles, the yeah, lady. Yeah. She's now become an international superstar. Like, it's possible now. So congrats to Black Coffee. Uh, you were mentioning Amakasi. I'll mention how Amakasi, Matate, and Nyukasela, Osizwe, and Nyukasela, Khini, Ekremstown, and Makanda. You know, just shout out to those places that have built people like myself. I know Smooda's from Etembisa. Come on. <laughs> and shout out to everybody from Mekas. As I was saying on last week's episode, don't let anybody out there intimidate you, make you feel less of yourself, maybe because you don't speak uh, English the best way you can, or maybe you probably even can't speak English at all. The, uh, your ability of speaking English does not determine your intelligence. Always remember that. And see it in your own neighborhood by recognizing so many successful people that you know. Like, but they are successful. So this thing is there for everybody or for anybody to succeed. I just want to say, just touching on black love and black talent, we are seeing a new season of black talent on radio. Uh, I called it. I remember we made a bit asking about Utibo Touch. He's going to get time time more. <laughs> I called it. <laughs> Tivo touches on Drive Time on Metro FM. Shout out to him and his powerful show. to my boy, man. Uh, shout out to a lady I admire very much and that I speak to, uh, Penny Libiane, who's going to be on Radio 2000. So proud of you, Exciting. Penny, my sister. So proud of you. Been working with her over the past couple of years at Massive Metro. And for me, I've always been that person. Whether Robot Boy is growing his own career, is leaving Massive Metro, whether Penny is grow, uh, she's growing her career. For me, I'm always happy when I work with people and they grow. They yeah. move on to other platforms. But I'm just loving this new radio season. Yeah. Radio has evolved. 
radio is on its A game. You've seen radio stations put cameras in studio now. Sure. And I remember when myself, Thibaut Touch and Gareth Cliff went, um, when I was fired, I think Touch <laughs> left and Gareth left. We went and we were preaching even to advertising agencies, even to the country to say, guys, the world is changing. Yeah. Multimedia is all coming together. It's all going to become one thing. It's so amazing that that was just four years ago. You look at things now where they are. You Changed. can see radio will never die, but it'll continue to evolve. And congratulations to all the young talents that are out there that have just joined their dream jobs. I know one kid, for instance, one young lady hmm. that I'm um, sort of a distant mentor to her lady by the name of Mpumi Mlambo. She was on Power FM. Yeah. She's just currently, just recently joined Metro FM. Congratulations to you, Msagazi. I'm so proud of you. Keep going and let me brag about you. Let me <laughs> brag that I linked you to Shimza to give you that job for you and Robo to present that long down show to see you now fly i'm always like a proud uncle to be like yeah that's my girl so keep doing your thing um put me not only put me as well there's a whole lot of others and just a new generation of young beautiful talents another young kid that we've been mentoring at homegrown radio mm. uh her name we actually did he, she was one of the students who was a part of my team when we we're doing the longest music radio show in the world when we we're setting the world record mm. she actually also co co-holds the world record but uh, I just heard good. she didn't even put it as part of her credentials Jeez. when she was entering the uh, BB Big Brother House in Zanzi. So my girl Tato, I'm so proud of you. Follow her guys on social media, Tato Immaculate, or call her Tato. I'm so proud of you and just a new generation of um, broadcasters. And let me not forget my brother, my friend, big up to Proverb. Welcome to Metro FM, brother. Jeez, shout out to Pro. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Pro. I'm a huge fan of how he's been able to pivot. People think like once you're in a space, you're stuck. No, you can always, always pivot. Going back to radio, these are kids I went to varsity with, Tando Tabete. Yeah, she's pretty killing, brilliant. Killing it. Oh, you uh, went to school with her? Yes, at UJ. Oh, wow. Uh, Melody Mia. Yeah. Wasanga Mayhem. Yeah, I am. I remember him from UJ FM. Yeah. yeah. DJ Ankle Tap, Mansui Pout. Jeez, it's, it's amazing seeing young people. And look, even on TV, people like Kukum Fupi on CNBC. Um, People like Fifi Peters as well. Brilliant minds. People I studied with and now they're like changing the world. It's very inspiring for people like myself. And, and talking about young people, when we're talking about um, guys that are killing it internationally, congratulating Black Coffee and Uncle Waffles, we can't forget to congratulate um, Major League DJs and uh, Durban Gogo, who will, who will be playing at Coachella. We're proud of all of you guys. That's Keep huge. doing your thing. It's time though. That's huge. That's huge. As Touch would say, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. So if you're not doing anything, guys, as I did say last week, Penyon is starting into his own religion. Something that we could have never ever fathomed that a black person can start their own religion because the first thing you'll think of is just attack from a left, right, and center. But you're doing it, bro. I am. I am. I in in an era where people are creating beverage companies, sneaker brands, where people are inventing, South Africans are, are, are creating electric cars. Trevor Noah and the guys are blazing the trail on, on international television. I think it's pretty cool for myself to be able to create something as well. And if I look at the core of what we call human consciousness and what differentiates us from animals, the idea of creating a belief system which structures the way we move. Non-racialism, non-sexualism, um, where people are about winning, where people are about finding their tribe, where people are about not being material, and not being conditioned and controlled by people that are out to exploit you. And I'm thinking in the same spirits of people like Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, etc. Why not me? Because that's essentially what differentiates normal people from the greats. They ask, why not me? I can be whatever I want to be. And I'm saying, I want to be the guy that creates a futuristic religion. Not a weird cult that's making people do weird things, but something futuristic. <laughs> No, so the, so the organic <laughs> <foods>. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Not trying to organic. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. None of that funny stuff. Uh, I'm very much about winning and where people feel, just like politics, just like business, just like anything else, where people feel like, I don't think this serves me anymore. What, what is there out there? We don't have to look to a 4,000 year old religion to lead us. We can create our own. And I'm hoping that just like yourself, just like some of these other guys we mentioned, why can't other kids out there be like, I think I've got a great idea on how to improve on what Islam has done. And I'd like to lead in that and do it. And if your people are winning, if they're in better health, if they are winning financially, if they're traveling the world, if they are happier people and they're not pushing hate and killing other people like the Crusades, why not? It's our time. 
I'm quite excited. We said with Peniel today we'll experiment because we've been doing one hour episodes. So we decided we will make a 30 minutes episode for this one alone and hear what you guys think. Do you prefer it shorter or do you prefer it longer? Go to the comment section, but this is the end of today's episode. We just want to experiment. Remember guys, this virtual Mukukui, we don't have it figured out. We're building it, we're trying this, what works, what doesn't, we throw away. If you guys come back complaining and say, hey, that was too short, you complain, we'll take it back to an hour. But if a lot of you guys prefer it shorter, like we've done it today, we'll keep it um, shorter, maybe 30, 40 minutes. It's basically total up to you. Thank you once again for today, bro. Virtual Mkuku. Love you. Love you, my brother. Thank you very much, brother. Let's keep doing this thing. Guys, we'll see you on the 30th of April at our farm, Homegrown Farm in Centurion. When you're coming on the 30th, come in the morning because what we're going to do, we're going to have Virtual Mkuku live. Come there. on. We'll be chilling <laughs> on stage on bean bags. There'll be an audio. By the way, guys, there's a food market that we do. On the day, there's going to be a food market. All you food entrepreneurs out there, Email my partner in case you'd like to buy a stall. To buy a stall is very cheap. It's less than a thousand, like 500 rands or something like that. Don't quote me on it. But email Nick, as in NIC, at leadership2020, numerical 2020. That's Nick at leadership2020.co.za. If you are a food entrepreneur or a foodpreneur, you're trying to get a stall so you can sell food on the day. There's going to be drinks. There's going to be performances. My live band is performing. We are launching Marua Pula, the music. We're launching Marua Pula, the NFT. And we're just going to be there and having a great time. And some of you guys who've never met Peniel in person, it's your opportunity to come through and, and, and meet the, uh, the light-skinned boy. Ah, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Spura. See you soon. Love only. All right, guys, I'll Thank see you, you next week. Eh? Don't forget to exploit this podcast. Take our videos, share them on different platforms. Let's grow this community. Remember, our vision and our goal for the end of this year is 100,000 subscribers. We love you. Thank you, son. This is The Hustlers Corner.